The complex conjugate of a complex number can be described as the reflection of that complex number across the real axis. So if I were to define a complex number, recall z is equal to a plus bi, where a is my real part and b is my imaginary part. If I were to define that complex number by coming across in the real axis A and going up B, I could define my complex number as that point right there. The complex conjugate of that number is a reflection across the real axis, the horizontal axis of a complex plane. How do you do a reflection? You go from uh, the point, you go to perpendicular from the point to the horizontal axis and then you continue the same distance. And here you can see you have uh, still in the on the real axis you've gone across A but now on the imaginary axis, you've gone down B rather than up B. So in this case, the complex conjugate, which is given the symbol Z hat, is equal to A minus B I. Okay, let's do a couple of examples. Maybe I'll go to good. Okay, examples. So let's say Z was equal to 4 minus 3i. The complex conjugate, remember, z hat, is equal to 4, I'll leave the real part alone, and then instead of being below the line, the real line, the real axis, it's above it. So complex conjugate is 4 plus 3i. Let's do another example. Call it example one. This is example two. Z is equal to, let's say, minus two plus four i. Okay. Z complex is negative two. I'm not doing anything with the real axis. And then I'm changing the sign because I'm reflecting across the, the uh, real axis. Okay, where these are useful, I'm going to show you now. Okay, and so where they're useful are when we divide by complex numbers. Okay, for example, let's say I have 4 plus 3i and I divide that complex number by a complex number. Let's divide it by 1 plus 2i. Okay? And your task, the thing you're asked to do, is to simplify. Simplify that. You can do that using the complex conjugate of the den denominator the bottom. The complex conjugate of, so the bottom number is i plus 1 plus 2i. The complex conjugate of that is 1 minus 2i. And let's see what happens. So like I said, you can multiply this fraction by the complex conjugate over the complex conjugate. It's complicated, but basically it's the same fraction. You're just multiplying by one. One minus two i divided by one minus two i is one. All right, let's rewrite this. So we can see what we're looking at. Four plus three i, parentheses, one minus two i, in parentheses, divided by one plus two i, in parentheses, 1 minus 2i. 
in parentheses. And you see you have a distribution problem both on the top and on the bottom. Let's be systematic about our distribution. Take the first one, multiply it by the first one there, and then multiply it by the second one. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have 4 multiplied by 1, that's 4. Then we have 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. And then we have an i. Okay? That's the first bit done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this one, I'm going to multiply it by that one, and then we're going to multiply it by the next one. So we have 3i times 1, and that's 3i. And then we have plus 3i multiply by negative 2i. So you have a positive and a negative, so it's going to end up negative. 3 times 2 is 6, and an i times i is i squared. Now we know we're going to be able to substitute that i squared for negative 1. Let's leave it there for a minute. What do we have down here? We're going to do the exact same, exact same thing. We're going to distribute. We're going to do the 1 times 1, and the 1 times negative 2i. Then we're going to do the 2i times 1, and the positive 2i multiplied by the negative 2i. So let's do that. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 2i is negative 2i. 2i times 1 is positive 2i. And then positive by a negative gives you a negative. 2 times 2 gives you 4. And then you end up with i times i, which is i squared. Okay? Let's push this up a little bit. I'll center that. And here we go. So, I can simplify. For both i squareds, I can substitute the i squared to be negative 1. That means I'm going to get positive 6 on the top, and I'm going to get positive 4 on the bottom. So I'm going to end up with 4 minus 8i plus 3i, positive 6, divided by 1 minus 2i plus 2i, positive 4. Now I haven't done it yet, but I'm hoping you can see that minus 2i plus 2i are going to cancel each other out. That's just 0. So on the bottom, I actually just have 5, 1 plus 4. On the top, I have numbers, and then I have imaginary um, parts. So, I can add and subtract like terms. So on the top, I have 10 minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5i. And at the bottom, I just have 5. And I can divide both of, let me move it up a little bit again. I can divide 10 divided by 5 minus 5i divided by 5, and I'm left with 2 minus i. 5 times i divided by 5 is 1. So a complex conjugate allowed us to simplify this expression, allowed us to simplify this expression here, complex number divided by a complex number into fairly simple looking complex number.